everybody, I'm Allison Cope and welcome to Split Coast Tampers. Today we're going to talk about a fabulous product called Chibi Lights. This little kit here is called their STEM Starter Kit and it's a great investment if you want to give this a try because it has everything that you need to create a couple of cards or projects using lights. So let's take a look in our box. Inside this little kit, you are going to get a fully illustrated little manual. And basically what it tells you is what you find in the kit and how you can use it. Okay, so it's very, very detailed, lots of pictures. It even gives you example pages where you can try out the products. So it's a great asset to have and to keep in your little stash of how to use your product. Then you're going to get an envelope with your toolkit inside. And inside this toolkit, you are going to get a roll of the, the sticky backed copper tape. And it is sticker backed, so it's really, really easy to use. And you can actually cut it with normal scissors. So this is great. And you're also going to receive a little package with a couple of clips, a couple of batteries, and some white LEDs and some primary colored LEDs. And of course, I've used a couple already. Um, you get red, blue, and yellow. And so you have at least some lights to tinker with. So let's take a closer look at our LED lights. These LED lights are made so that you can peel and stick. They are super, super easy to use. And if you look closely enough, there's a W indicating that these LEDs happen to be white in color. You'll find red and blue and all the colors of the rainbow. You can purchase extra lights in addition to your kit to make your kit go longer. These uh, if you look closely enough, have a positive and a negative side. I always look at them as the positive is the large band of the triangle. And the negative is the point because it's, let's say it's smaller or it's negative. So if you need to look at them though, they are actually written right on the sticker. So let's get playing and learn all about how to use our Chibitronics. The supplies that you're going to need today will be heavyweight cardstock. Any color will do. This is 110 pound white cardstock from my local craft store. You're going to need a bone folder. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need some kind of craft knife for cutting out detailed areas. You're going to need the coloring medium of your choice. Of course, you're going to need some lovely stamps with some kind of light image or illuminating image. And you're also going to need some foam tape. Okay. Plus, you will also need some Chibitronic supplies, which includes adhesive copper tape, a battery or two and some Chibitronics LED self-adhesive light stickers and any color that you have is fine and one last thing is a really strong adhesive and some pattern papers to finish off your card. So join me today, let's make a card. So for today's card example, we're going to be using the Rustic Rejoicing stamp set by Power Poppy. And we're going to be using the dove that's all nestled in the bow with some really cool large light bulbs. So we're going to start by stamping our image. Plus I'm going to put on our sentiment as well, Peace on Earth. And we're going to use some My Favorite Things Black Licorice Ink. Because I'm actually going to color our image. I've got our stamp and our sentiment all put into my mini misty here and we're going to ink it up quite generously. I have cut a really simple 
rectangle that has some stitching on the outside and this is just going to make my job a lot easier because it's a very uniform shape and I can cut exactly the same thing time and time again to use as my backer. All right, let's make sure I'm going to use it one more time. The beauty of the mini Misty is so that I can stamp an image again. our stamp and we've got a nice well, fabulous image now before I go anywhere I'm going to take the same kind of rectangle I'm going to put the same thing back in my mini misty and without re-inking let's see if we can get a fairly decent what I'm looking for is to get the basic image I'm not even worried about it being perfect but it's going to help me lay out my lights. So let's just hope. And that'll work because it's nice and soft. Even though it's not perfect, it doesn't have to be because you're not going to see this. This is just going to help me with placement. So you can see all those five bulbs and you can see our greeting. Now, going back to our chibi lights again, one side is the negative and one side is the positive. And you must create a copper trail to connect all of the negatives so all of the same points have to be attached to the same piece of copper and the same goes with your positive side everything has to be touching the same piece of copper tape so that's where you're going to have to diagram your back piece so our battery is going to sit in this area here and we're going to have, we're going to put this as our negative. This is the negative trail. So it's going to come out from the bottom of the battery pack. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to make that in a second. And we are going to go out and around and try and making the least amount of bends we can. Now, of course, it's on an arch, so it's only going to be so bendy so we want to make a line where all of the negative points are going to be attached so we're basically I'm just going to touch all the basic ends of our lights for the most part okay so that's our negative trail okay and if you've noticed I've left it all on the outside so this is just going to make it easier so then we're going to create our positive trail and we're going to take it out from the battery pack. We're going to take it over and across. And once again, I'm going to touch all of those lights with my positive trail. These have to be, basically, these two lines have to be touching our triangle of lights. Okay, you always have to plan this out first. You can slightly adjust it. They are a sticky copper tape, but you need to at least plan this out so you know where you're going because once you take the backer off this, you've got to pretty much put it down. Now, the beauty of this tape is that it is approximately, um, you know, not quite a quarter of an inch in width. But you can actually cut it in half. So you can actually take your regular scissors and split your copper tape nice and slowly, cutting it. Try not to bend this if you can until you actually have to place things down. I'm going to cut a fair amount and I'm actually going to cut more than I think I need. You want to try and avoid putting joints in this product because it just it makes for um, circuits that don't necessarily right. work. Before we put this down we're going to create our little piece that holds our battery pack. So I've just cut myself a scrap of lightweight cardstock. This happens to be a heavyweight or 110 pound cardstock. And the reason why I tend to go heavier is that 
you're going to have some weight to this card. So your card needs a little bit of stability. So don't be afraid to uh, use some heavier cardstock. It's just going to be a lot more sturdy for all of the things that are going to go on it. And it's also going to make your card much more sturdy for this project. So I've taken my little piece of scrap paper and you want to make it about the width of your battery pack. And of course they're not very, they're not very big. Okay. About the width. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not something you're going to see. And you're going to fold it in half. And you can leave the fold uh, not so crisp because the battery has some dimension and it's going to need some bulk anyway. Okay. Now I'm going to take my tape runner here and I'm just going to apply adhesive to the bottom and I'm going to place my battery little housing here right in our little U-shaped slot there. Okay. All right. Let's start by opening this up. When your battery sits in here, it is going it needs to make contact with the end of the copper tape that is its goal in sitting there so we're going to start by creating our negative pathway so i'm going to carefully peel off the backer and once again those planned lines you're going to use those to get you across your page you want to make sure that you have an amount of tape that comes in to your battery housing. This is where a bone folder is going to come in uh, really, really handy. So you're going to press that just, just lightly to begin with. And for your corners, what you need to do is you need to press it to the paper so it makes good contact. You're going to bring it back on itself. Press it, just a little teeny press with your fingers. Then you are going to kind of turn your copper so that it's kind of coming back on itself. All right. You don't want to make too many creases in this copper tape if you can. And you don't want to cut it or splice it to make it two pieces. You want to keep the integrity of that single, single piece. So using your fingertips or your bone folder, you're going to do the same at any joint. So I'm just trying to, I'm just lightly for the moment, just turning my copper tape and it will go around bends to a certain extent. But once again, if you go back on itself a little tiny bit, it just, it keeps the connection, keeps that copper piece hole and allows for the electricity to run adequately through the tape. So no, no, no cut lines. You want one continuous piece of tape. Trust me, it's going to be your friend. You do not want to have to cut this into pieces. So continue on to the end, just using your bone folder just to help you get around the curve or your joints all the way to the end and if you have extras that's okay it's better to have extra at the end than not enough and of course just bring out the scissors and just snip it off all right so there's our negative line from the battery right around the corner all around so before we go any farther I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to give it a really good crease. I'm going to make sure that it's nicely connected to my cardstock. It's nice and flat. The joints are fair, as flat as I can get them. And there we go. All right. So let's go and do our second one. And of course we know this is going to fit as far as length is concerned. Um, the positive line is going to be a little bit longer, not by much. And I'll show you why right now. I'm going to flip this back up side, up right side. Now, going back to our little battery housing. So when you put the battery in and the negative is the bubble bottom, 
and the positive is marked with a plus sign, they have to be touching the metal. So this surface, being the negative, is in contact with the copper on the bottom, just by laying it in there. In order to make the contact with the plus side, which is the top of the battery, that's where this housing comes into play. So by opening this up and beginning our line of copper tape on the inside of this flap, that's how we're going to make that connection. And in order to make it a seamless connection, this is how we do it. So the top of your housing, right there. So when it closes, see, it's gonna close on the top of that battery, like so. So on the inside, you're going to, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. You're going to close that opening again and you're going to go down the back of your door okay right across the door right to the base and again I'm going to bring my handy dandy bone folder in because I want to give actually I'm going to bring my pencil in here I want to make sure that this joint has a lot of copper tape right here because this is a three-dimensional joint it is not creased flat so give yourself a little tuck-tuck of tape, okay? So there is actual tape that's stuck to the bend right in there. So give it some help with something pointy. Try not to break that connection of tape, okay? Bring it back down to the base cardstock, okay? And then again, we've got to make a bend to come back to our line, okay? So you don't have to be perfectly on your lines. You have to be fairly perfect on your, your lines over here. But as far as this part is concerned, you don't have to. So we're going to bring it back on itself again. Stick it back on itself. And I'm going to make a 90 degree corner. Okay, our fold a little more backer off our copper tape. I'm just going to run parallel here, just using my finger to lightly put it down. Once again, I'm going to use my fabulous tool here, bend it back on itself, just a tiny bit more. And you're going to have to play with this, you know. This, this project is going to take a little bit of time and patience, but you know what, in the end, Whoever gets your card creation is going to be like, oh my goodness, how did you do that? And you know what? That's going to be all worth it. So I'm just going to turn my card for ease of creating here. I'm going to gently press that down because our, our light needs to sit across this. So it needs to have enough copper tape to connect the point of the negative and the the flatter side of the positive. So you just have to make sure that you get enough distance between there that it's not too, too far away. So for instance, if we put a white light, point, small end is negative. This is the negative side here. You can double check just by laying it, the sticker right over top and look, it is gonna to touch. See, as long as it touches there and it's gonna to touch on the point, you have then made contact with positive and negative side. All right, so I'm going to go all the way around again, carefully pressing it in. I'm not using a lot of pressure right now. I'm just, just using it to tack things down ever so slightly, making sure that I'm not breaking the tape. And trust me, if you break the tape, you're gonna have to rip it all off <laughs> and do it again. Yes, uh, don't ask me how I know. All right, there we go. And you know what? This roll of tape is gonna do you a lot of projects, so don't be afraid to have leftovers. It's okay, all right. So then you're going to carefully, again, press and burnish all of those joints and any wrinkles in your tape. This is just going to make that 
energy flow a lot smoother. Be very careful of this joint, all right? Because you don't want to break the tape because otherwise you're going to break your connection. And don't forget to do the inside of your housing. Okay, so now we get to play with the lights. And as far as I'm concerned, whenever I see these big, bold, beautiful lights, I honestly think color. So we're going to use a variety of different colors because some people just absolutely love colored lights at Christmas. And I think it's just super festive when we get to use all kinds of different colors. All right, let's go on to the next step of applying our sticker backed LED lights. Now, I think I'm going to use red and green and white lights on our little image here. So I'm gonna pull in my stickers. They are labeled with letters indicating the color. So this one happens to be a red one. You get red, blue, yellow, and white stickers in your kit. So you get to tinker with all kinds of fun stuff. Now, remembering that negative is our point and positive is the fat side, we've got to put it on the right side. So negative, if you need to, follow it out. Dun, 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 dun. So our points all need to be on this line. So we're gonna go red. And just make sure we've got contact there. This one could have been a little bit farther in and around, but it should be okay. We can actually test it. So positive is showing on the top, negative on the bottom. We make contact by just pressure. Dun, 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 dun. We have red light, look at that. I'll shade it a bit for you. All right, let's go and put on the remainder. Just set that off to the side. We've got white. W for white. Once again, we're putting it over top the light with the point on the bottom because that's where all of our negative points need to go. So there's the white. And again, you can try each and every one. There we go. And we're going to go into the bonus pack here, which has all tertiary colors. So it has our green, our pink, and our orange. And they put this really nice seal over top to hold everything in, which is great. Don't throw your packaging out. This is a great way to store them. Just keeps them nice and safe. So we need a green. So I'm going to pull out a G. There we go. Put that back in your package to keep the rest of them safe. Point going on the bottom line. And let's double check. That's the beauty of this. Oh la la! Look at that. Yeah, we have light. All right, I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to go on to the next step. So the next step in our card is we need to allow for the light to pass through the top image. So we need to cut out these bulbs. So I'm going to bring in my cutting mat here and I'm going to use my Fisker's finger knife and you're going to cut out all the bulb parts. Don't cut out the end of the bulb because that would be metal but anywhere where there would be light passing through. Okay, and the beauty of this finger knife is that it's got a great precision point and I'm leaving the point in my cardstock so that I can kind of go around the corners. Okay, I'm just rotating the cardstock and when I come to a corner, I can just kind of back off the knife a little bit and drag the knife through my cardstock. And this is nice thick cardstock and it popped out like nothing. All right, so I'm gonna finish off the rest of our bulbs. If you have little images that are across the bulbs, make sure you go around them, okay? Because they are part of the image. Try your best to just cut out the bulbs. Then we'll go on with the next step in putting some vellum in behind to kind of uh, 
cast a, a soft light coming out of the bulb. Okay. I took the liberty of coloring our dove and boughs. Just used Copic markers. Everything is cut and ready to go. So let's put on some vellum. This will help kind of diffuse the light. Don't need a huge piece, just enough to cover the, the lights at the back. I'm just going to trim off a piece here. We're going to flip this upside down. And I'm actually going to adhere, put the adhesive on my vellum. And we just put it over those openings. There we go. And that'll just diffuse the light. Let's do a little tester here. Bring in our base. Uh, negative side of the battery down. And we're going to just pop that right over top. And there are our glowing lights. Now we just have to make sure that our package is all ready to go to go on our card. And let's let's do that right now. Okay. So back to our base again. What we need to do is we need to somehow keep this battery in place. All right, because if we don't, it's just going to slide all around and when the person gets it in the mail, it's just going to go bloop and they're going the card is not going to work. So let's grab some of our fun adhesive tape, foam tape here. And what we need to do is we need to build up this backer piece so that it sandwiches in our battery in the right place and that it's not going to fall out. Now with foam tape we are going to need at least triple so I'm going to pull some out here and I'm going to place it on itself to create double width. I'm just going to trim it off here. And then I'm going to remove the backer on one side. And we're going to put another, another layer. Stick that down onto our sticky side. Right down to the end of my roll on my foam tape. <laughs> All right. You ideally can do this with um, two layers, but it actually, it works better actually if you have three, just because of the thickness of this battery. All right, so we need to build a little house for our battery here. We need to keep him stable in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little case around him first. So you can actually put foam tape right over top of your copper tape. It's not going to hurt it in any shape or form. So just peel off one side. So by placing this here, this will not impact the connectivity of your lights at all, okay? So just know that you can put this right over top because it's not something that's metallic and um, conducts electricity, it is completely fine over that copper tape. Let's make a little spot right here for a battery so it doesn't tip out the other side. I'm just making sure I don't cover up my light there. Okay, I'm just going to turn this around because we want to we want to put a little bit of foam tape at the top here too. Now, uh, when I send my cards, I tend to send them to family and family for me is far away. So I put a little piece of plastic or piece of heavy duty paper um, and I put it kind of tucked in on top of the battery so the battery doesn't actually get used up while it's sitting in the in the mail for my recipient. So what I do is I'm just using a double piece of foam tape and I'm just going to just take off whoops, one side of the backer. 
because I'm actually going to leave whoop, leave the glossy paper on this so that I can slip a piece of paper in kind of like let's say this is my little piece of paper my piece of paper is going to slip into this sandwich basically and it's going to sit here and because this is not making contact with the battery um, it will it won't actually press see with that paper there I'm pressing and I'm not getting any light so it's just another trick to send it in the mail is just to leave an open gap and stick some kind of piece of paper in between and if you make it the width that's even better okay so it's one way to pass things through the mail and make sure that you're not using a battery so it's not not going to be dead when it gets to your recipient <laughs> okay so we've made our little area there for our batteries little home so we want to continue on um, adding foam tape to the back of our image here. We want to basically cover this in, you know, fair amount because wherever there isn't foam tape, you can depress the cardstock, right? So you don't want to get dimply cardstock on your card. Um, so you want you want a decent amount of foam tape. This is going to cost you money to send it through the mail. So be aware of that. Either slip it in with a, a box of um, other gifts or just be known that this is going to cost you some money to send. Okay. So I'm going to just continue putting foam tape on the back and I'll be right back to show you how it looks. Okay, I've added all of my three layers of foam tape to the back here. Um, I have gone in and just added another little fella. This is just a double layer here, just to kind of keep that battery from moving around, okay? This one is also a two layer piece and I'm not gonna take the backer paper off of these two pieces because I'm gonna put a piece of paper in for mailing purposes. So they're going to stay with their their waxy paper on the top. Okay, so this little fella has a nice little home. And if you wanted to put a little message on that little slip of paper, um, like remove me and press on the sentiment, you could do that. Um, I'm going to actually just put a little message for my recipient on the inside of my card. I don't want to put anything that um, hangs out on the outside um, other than the mailing piece of paper. So I'm going to keep it really simple and just leave a little message for my recipient on the inside. So I'm just going to remove all the back of paper. I'm going to carefully place this over top and our focal point is complete. I'll be right back with our finished card. And here's my final card. I decided just to go really, really simple, simple piece of pattern paper on my card base. I used some nice, really strong adhesive to adhere my piece onto my card just so that it remains stuck. And here it is, everybody. All I'm going to do is just put a little note in for my recipient. Please press the sentiment on the front of the card. And voila, it is ready to go for somebody special. And I wanted to share with you a card that I'd made earlier. This features the Glitter House Village from Power Poppy again. And for this one... I only use two layers of foam tape and I want to show you what happens when you only use two. I'm not even pressing that button and I took out my little safe piece of paper that's stuck in that battery house there. So this is why you need to use three. But I just thought I'd share it with you. It's got some glitter and I use both green and blue and I love the way it casts the color together so you kind of get a teal. So yeah, I had fun with this one too. 
and this is a perfect image to do the same thing. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you give these products a try.